Snipers are seen as the grim reapers of the battlefield. You won't see them, but they'll see you. They're elite sharpshooters that have become historic heroes, and have been the source for inspiration for real and fictional characters. And it's these movies that have made them very popular. They're not the only badass warrior in the military, but these certain snipers keep our interest. A fan favorite from Saving Private Ryan is Private Daniel Jackson, played by Barry Pepper, one of the many snipers that landed on Omaha Beach and made it out alive. Under Captain Miller's command, he becomes part of the squad on the mission to rescue Private Ryan. His view on the military kind of blends in with his view of religion. He acts as though he's God's weapon using his weapon against the enemy, which is a Springfield 03 sniper rifle. That was the official rifle being used by snipers in the US military during World War II. He was of course fictional, but Vasily Saifsev from Enemy at the Gates, played by Jude Law, was a real soldier in the Red Army. Racking up an impressive kill count during the Battle of Stalingrad, he even became propaganda against the Nazis. And the weapon he used was a Mosin Nagant. He even ended up dueling off against a counter German sniper who was trying to kill him, with the film demonstrating how sniper duels happen. In fact, the first movie to focus mainly on the sharpshooter's perspective is the 1993 B-movie Sniper. Thomas Beckett, played by Tom Berenger, who is assigned combat missions, sets in the harsh tropical jungle environments of Panama, showing that snipers have to master not only their weapon, but their patience, in order to get the kill. His weapon, though, was a Remington M40A1. It's not only jungles and rainforests snipers have difficulty working in, but heated deserts. Deserts that became the battlefield during Operation Desert Storm in Jarhead. Jake Gyllenhaal plays a marine scout sniper, where most of his war is basically surviving the fierce conditions of the desert front, dealing with boredom and anxiety. His weapon was the exact same as Thomas Beckett. The movie also explores the relationship a sniper has with their spotter, and are likely the ones who are going to get a glimpse of the enemy. Another historic moment that snipers found themselves in was a man-made environment called No Man's Land, which was World War I's Western Front. And because of the stalemate, it made it a haven for snipers to attack and defend. And one of them was Private Barry Sterinsky from 2002's Death Watch, a member of the group of soldiers who take refuge and cover in a haunted trench. The official weapon of British snipers during the war was uh, Lee Enfield, but I guess a mistake was made because this was the World War II model Enfield. But despite how well trained you are, it doesn't get you ready for facing the paranormal. Possibly the most famous American sniper who ever lived was that of Chris Kyle, star of 2014's American Sniper, played by Bradley Cooper. His tour of duties made him the most deadliest sniper during the Second Gulf War. His weapon, a Macmillan TAC 338A. He's not only an elite marksman, but he becomes somewhat of a guardian angel to GIs on the field. The movie also shows the hardships of trying to transition back into civilian life. And sometimes that becomes a soldier's most difficult fight in life. Before his untimely death, Kyle became a celebrity, not only to the military, but to the public as well. This legacy is something not all men will share, with the case of Lee Harvey Oswald, in JFK, played by Gary Oldman. Despite the movie going against the historical fact, it was Oswald's Marine Corps training that put an end to one of the most protected men in the world, John F. Kennedy, with a Manlicher Carcano rifle. Like I said, snipers see us, but we don't see them. But with these films, we can examine their skill and bravery, seeing periods of history through their scope.